let's take a closer look at the capture compressor, why it was developed, where you would implement it, and the importance of having it on location. With the new Quad B and Quad C regulations coming up, we as an industry can no longer operate gas actuated valves on location. It is a must that we switch those over to instrument air. That is great. However, a lot of our locations do not have electricity to run electrified AC air compressors. We've also found that DC air compressors are not as reliable as we've hoped. Therefore, Capture Energy has developed what we can call a zero electricity instrument air compressor that utilizes energy on location and converts energy in the form of gas pressure to air pressure while emitting zero emissions. Well, taking a closer look, we have a few basic components that allows us this piece of equipment to operate. We have a control panel, six volt, that can operate for up to 10 days without sunlight. This is the brains of the operation. It's also sensing air pressure within our air receiver tank. This is an ASME 150 PSI rated tank. The next major component, this is our 5 to 2 valve, custom made by Capture Energy for this application. This 5 to 2 valve, then we move on to a motive gas cylinder. This is a high pressure cylinder which takes gas and oscillates a piston up and down, which is then tied to an air compressor. High pressure gas enters the 5 to 2 valve through this inlet. We have a 100 mesh screen here uh, to filter out any particulates that might cause damage to your system. High pressure inlet comes through here and drives the piston down. The gas remaining below the piston is exhausted through this line and back into a downstream system. A suction scrubber on a, uh, on a gas compressor and or just the downstream sales line on producing well. Once this piston reaches the very bottom, our control valve, our 5 control valve, will shift and now send high pressure gas below the piston, driving the piston up, allowing for a reciprocating motion of this piston. This is a result tied to our air compressor is the same exact piston with a suction and discharge check mounted onto the tank. What's this mean for you? It means for every time this piston cycles, we create air on both the up and the downstroke within this cylinder. Let's take a closer look at the capture compressor, how it operates and how you might see it implemented on your location. This red air hose simplifies a high pressure gas source, typically coming off first stage or second stage of your gas compressor. That high pressure source is fed through our 502 control valve and is sent to our motive gas piston, which is then oscillating based on that high pressure gas. So as the gas depressurizes, it's gonna come out this line and typically exhausted into your suction scrubber. Remember, we need a differential pressure for this machine to work properly, but first stage, second stage compression going back into your suction scrubber is typically how our customers install these units. What you will see, so this is the brains of this box, the capture controller is the pressure transducer. We also have the ability to set our desired air pressure in here. So we have a low limit and a high limit switch within this, this box. So once our air pressure falls below that desired air pressure set in the box, the air compressor will automatically kick on. And then once we receive, once we achieve the desired high pressure, it'll turn itself off. If you'll see me operate this valve, this simulates the air that's typically gonna go out to all your control valves, your level controllers, your suction controllers, your back pressure valves out on location. Anything that takes a pneumatic source to no longer release emissions into the atmosphere or methane into the atmosphere, causing you to have your quadro beam uh, non-compliance. So let's simulate you using some of your dumps on location and your control valve. As you can see, the air compressor automatically turns itself on and once it reaches its desired air pressure that we have set in here, it'll automatically shut itself off. We can run that one more time.
This is the capture compressor, an instrument air compressor that can operate with zero electricity on your stranded locations and or locations where electricity for instrument air is not reliable. Let's talk general maintenance for the capture compressor and or the lack thereof. One of the biggest feedbacks I get from our current customer base is how little of maintenance our machine takes in comparison to what's out there with DC air compressors or AC air compressors and even oil change consistently. If you'll see, we have a greaser in the top of our cylinder here. Not every gas system requires lubrication. However, if you have a nasty gas system, um, we have inserted the greaser here in the case that you want to keep this lubricated frequently uh, in those harsh, harsh environments. We have developed what we call our Gorilla Seal Package that requires zero grease and zero maintenance on these cylinders. The air filter. This is a standard air filter that you can go down to your local automotive store and pick up. It doesn't take special requirements to go order one from me or order one online. Uh, go to your local supply store and they're going to have these on there for you. We expect these to last years though before they get replaced. Moving on, you have a drain at the very bottom for your water. We recommend draining this off at least once a week if you don't install an auto drain. We have seen a lot of our customers opt to put an auto drain or auto lift or auto dump uh, on, on their tank itself. You're not able to see it on the back here, but our supply regulator that feeds our pipe and tube valve and our control box does have a drain and a sump on it to keep moisture out of all your, your major components. Other than that, there is no other maintenance on this, on this machine besides possibly an annual or biannually seal change out within these cylinders and the 5 by 2 valve. It should be noted that with these being chrome lined and honed, they're designed to last for many, 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 many years and over the life of the well. The same way with our 5 by 2 valve. It's meant to be rebuilt and not replaced. So anything and everything on this entire machine can be rebuilt from the ground up by adding a few new seals to the machine. We're not throwing it away. You're not buying a whole new piece of equipment. We're just replacing seals. We'll get into that video later. Let's take a closer look at the capture controller and its key functions. As you'll see in the screen here, 42. That indicates the pressure within the air receiver at this time. You will also see a high limit of 42 and a low limit currently set at 40. This indicates that when the air pressure within the tank gets below 40 PSIG, the air compressor will automatically turn on. This 42 represents once, we once the air compressor gets to 42 PSI, it will automatically shut itself off. We can easily adjust these limits by holding down the high limit and pushing up and down on these arrows. Similarly, the low limit up and down with these. We typically like to see this span no more than two PSI from, from each other. Moving on, you'll see an options tab here. This options tab, when you hold it down, goes through different key functions to operate this machine. You see the first time I hold this down, this says valve dwell time. This is the amount of time it takes for that piston to make a complete cycle up and then down. So if you notice that your air compressor is not making a full cycle, you'll need to lengthen that dwell time to a higher number, allowing it to have time to make a full complete stroke in either the up or down motion or vice versa by lowering it down if you have too much time in between strokes. This number will need to be decided out on the location where it changes with different differential pressures per well pad. If we choose to hold down the options button again, this is the max runtime. This feature is extremely important for when you have air leaks. We can adjust this max runtime to 59 minutes, 40 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever your desire is to say, hey, this machine, if it's been running constantly and never meeting its exact high pressure limitations, it will shut itself off and go into a break period. Hit that button again, we have what we call a minimum wait time. We basically control the minimum wait time in between retries. So if your compressor thinks it has a leak and it's been running for 15, 20 minutes straight without shutting off, it'll go into a max runtime shut off. It will then wait our minimum wait time that we put into the, into the machine. We'll hit the button again here, we'll see number of retries. So if we meet our max runtime, and then we wait our min minimum wait time, we actually have it retry. Simply push the up and down arrows on how many times you would like this machine to try to retry to restart itself. Check-in pulse. 
Again, up and down arrows. We utilize this function a lot in the winter time where we want to keep the machine moving even when you're not utilizing air or if you have a well down that you still want this machine to operate periodically to keep from standing still for too long. Valve pulse time is not important. That's an internal program within the box and how long we send a signal for this thing to shift. We always leave it at 85 on valve pulse time. And slave address. The slave address is important if you want to be able to operate Modbus 485. If you look in here, and I'm not sure if you can see it, but um, at the bottom here, it'll, it'll state Modbus 485 on most of our new units. So you can talk with this box. Moving over here to our data section, this is a cycle count that you can reset by hitting the up and down arrows. So if you want to see or keep track of how many times this machine is cycling in a 24 hour period, a one hour period, simply go in here, hit the data button and catch your cycle count and reset as desired. Last runtime, extremely important. So we said this machine will turn itself on and turn itself off. By understanding how long our last runtime was, we can understand how long this machine's actually, or, or the duty cycle of this machine. After last runtime, we can actually take an average, average runtime. So throughout the last 24 hours, how long does this machine stay off before it turns itself back on? Vice versa, we have the last off time. An average off time. Our battery voltage and our solar panel voltage. And then lifetime cycles. This is extremely important in understanding seal life in the, in the location with where you have this machine at. So if we know that during the life cycle, this thing operated 3 million cycles um, before needing new seals or a 502 needs serviced, we might want to put this on a PM at every two and a half million cycles or two million cycles. But at least you'll get an understanding of how long your cycle life is and your seal life is within the machine.